now it is the time to create a token, but now we are going to create a token that is fully compliant with the ERC20 token standard from Ethereum. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to analyze the anatomy of an ERC20 token. And then we will create our own token. Now let's analyze the anatomy of an ERC20 token. To do so, we need to go to the Ethereum Improvement Proposals website where we're going to be able to see all the standards. Okay, here we can find the ERC20 token standard. And let's see. So why this standard was created is because initially people were creating different tokens in, in different ways. And of course that carries a lot of problems because then how are wallets go going to support these tokens? And as in any industry, standards are good because it helps to, to move into one direction and also it helps to have interoperability. So this standard was very important for the Ethereum ecosystem. And let's check the specification, which mostly define an interface that all the tokens that want to be fully compliant with the ERC20 standard have to implement. Okay, so some of the things that this define, this specification defines are functions that, as you can see, they are optional. For instance, the name, this can help to improve usability and to allow users to see the name of a token, right? Like my token. The symbol, for instance, this symbol is also an optional function, but can help a lot to improve the usability, okay? The function decimals is also optional, but it's also very important. And in our example, once we start implementing our own ERC20 token, we are going to see the importance of defining proper decimals. Right now, if you can see, if you define decimals at eight, it means that in order to, to count one token, you need to have the number followed by eight zeros. In this case, you have three, six, and eight. So this number, one with eight decimals, will represent actually one single token, okay? The total supply, this is not optional, this is mandatory, and this is important to know the total token supply of a particular token, okay? The balance of helps you to return the balance of any account. We have this function. As you can see, it receives an owner and returns the balance, okay? We also have the function transfer similar to what we did in the minimal token example, but we also have more advanced functionality like transfer from. Transfer from is very useful because it allows you to transfer from a different contract. So what happened is that in fact, you can approve an spender. Let's say, there is a contract where you deposit your tokens and then you approve that particular contract to transfer tokens on your behalf. So you first need to approve using this, this function. You will need to pass the address of the spender of that contract and then how many units can this contract spend on your behalf. And then the contract will simply use this function to transfer. So he's gonna be able to transfer tokens that belong to you to any Ethereum address, okay? 
um, we have a method for allowance. This helps us to check how much a particular address can spend tokens that belong to a certain owner. Okay? And then some events, transfer and approval. All right. The standard also contains some example implementations and also some history. 